Well, hey guys, I'm here at Target to check out the skincare. In this video, we're gonna go in and check out skincare products that can help with sun damage. So if that sounds exciting, hit the thumbs up. Here we have a Dapoline brand name Differin Gel. This is FDA approved for the treatment of acne, but it's a retinoid and retinoids can actually help your body in removing sun damaged skin cells. Now, tretinoin is the most well studied for doing that and that's a prescription only retinoid. It's been shown to minimize the number of pre-skin cancers that people who make a lot of skin cancers form. But as far as stuff you can buy over the counter, a Dapoline is probably going to be your most reliable bet. It also has been shown to improve the appearance of sunspots. You could use it to the backs of your hands if you wanted to. You don't have to go with the brand name Differin Gel. There are a few other generic versions and other brands like La Roche-Posay over there has an Dapoline. In contrast to a Dapoline, which is a retinoid, it's already active. Once you put it on the skin, it goes in and goes to work. Your other option is retinol. Now retinol is, has to get into your skin and be converted to the active form, so it takes a little bit more effort on the part of your skin to actually get it to be effective. It's often less irritating, but this is another option. So you've got Olay's Retinol 24 Max, very moisturizing, fragrance-free formula. They also have a retinol combined with a sunscreen. This is a chemical sunscreen, so it should not leave a cast. You know, a lot of people ask, as a side note, about using retinol or retinoid like a Dapoline during the daytime. For many forms, it is an option because it's all in how the product is formulated. So Adapalene is actually stable in the presence of light and can be worn during the day. Retinol, depending on the brand, may or may not be stable in the presence of light. I'm assuming that the Olay one is because they have it as a daytime product. But a misconception about retinoids is that you can't use them during the daytime because they make you sensitive to the sun. They don't. They don't increase your risk of a sunburn. They can cause sensitivity, meaning when you go out in the sun, you may feel a little bit more warmth, tingling, but it's not actually increasing your risk of a sunburn. So the main reason why people are advised to put them on at nighttime is because a lot of forms of retinoid or retinol are not stable in daylight. So you put them on before you go to bed and it's dark in your room. Now, recently I did a video on eye care products and that was in Walgreens. So check that out if you missed it. But this particular product is a retinol with, for the eyes. Retinol can be pretty irritating around the delicate skin of the eyelids. So it's a you know option to go with a dedicated eye cream that has retinol in it. They tend to be formulated to be a little better tolerated there. And this would be an option uh, by Rock. Looks like number seven has one as well. And speaking of retinol and number seven, their Adv Advanced Retinol Complex. I reviewed this a few years ago. This is another great option. It has matrixel in it, which is a peptide that can have a wrinkle smoothing effect. Not gonna do anything to actively address sun damage per se, but that is an option. The burden of sun damage comes from the generation of free radicals that damage the DNA in your skin cells as well as proteins and lipids that constitute cell membranes. Now sunscreen is a key player in the fight against sun damage and skin cancer risk. It protects you against UV rays but it can't protect you 100%. Some free radicals are going to be generated and some damage is going to occur. So the idea of putting on an antioxidant serum to minimize that even further as well as minimize stress from other environmental stressors like pollution, infrared radiation, and visible light. When we talk about vitamin C, I like to focus on ascorbic acid because that's really where the data lie. There are a lot of alternative forms of vitamin C that are not as well studied, so I like to focus on ascorbic acid. Acid. This one by Vichy is an option. Unfortunately, as I pointed out in the majority of my videos whenever I talk about vitamin C, there are a few challenges with it. 
It's not the most stable ingredient. It's difficult for it to penetrate the skin. So formulation is key because it's a cosmetic. It's not regulated, so manufacturers don't have to demonstrate efficacy. They don't have to show that their product actually gets in and does anything. For that reason, I do suggest, as with retinol, going with brands, bigger brands that have large R&D, like Vichy, which is a L'Oreal brand. La Roche-Posay is another L'Oreal brand. However, their product, I believe it has fragrance in it, which can be irritating and actually worsen hyperpigmentation, but this is a good brand. Now, the thing about these, this packaging, the dropper bottle we've got here, and same thing with the Vichy one, is that as the ascorbic acid is exposed to air, each time you go in and out of that package, it is more likely that the ascorbic acid will degrade. So ideally, airless pumps are probably a better option for ascorbic acid. CeraVe, a L'Oreal brand, their ascorbic acid, it's in a tube that I think helps minimize air and light exposure even further with the ongoing use of it. I reviewed this for you guys a while ago, but that would be another option. Now, the way to incorporate ascorbic acid into your routine, if you choose to, is when you wake up in the morning, this would be the, uh, the ascorbic acid would be the first product you would put on, just a tiny amount to create a thin film on the surface of sun exposed skin, allow it to absorb and then apply sunscreen on over it. Now, ascorbic acid products are often at an acidic pH that is necessary to allow for optimal penetration into the skin, but because of that, they can be very irritating. Personally, I find them very irritating for me. So, if you want another antioxidant that has been shown to improve the signs of skin aging related to sun damage, that would be niacinamide. And you don't have to have a separate niacinamide product. You could just use a moisturizer with niacinamide. I always like to point out the CeraVe products, um, but like for example, CeraVe PM, their AM moisturizer with sunscreen also has niacinamide. A lot of people, myself excluded, find niacinamide to be irritating. So if that's you, then you know, maybe consider ascorbic acid. Niacinamide is a lot easier of an ingredient to reliably formulate into a product that it will actually get into your skin as opposed to ascorbic acid is a lot trickier. And niacinamide tends to be a less costly ingredient. When it comes to addressing sun damage, there's no question that sunscreen is an essential. One thing people don't realize is you think about sunscreen as prevention against sun damage, but it's actually essential for improving existing sun damage because UV rays from the sun, they suppress the immune system that circulates through the skin, impairing the ability to heal sun damage. Wearing sunscreen alone has been shown to improve the visible signs of skin aging related to sun damage, as well as prevent. Now, when you're talking about sun damage, what comes to most people's minds is probably ultraviolet radiation from the sun. You've got UVB that's mostly responsible for burning the skin, and UVA that penetrates really deeply, destroys collagen, suppresses the immune system, and leads to hyperpigmentation. But you have other types of radiation that come from the sun that impact the skin, including uh, infrared radiation, which skincare products don't really protect from that, but antioxidants may. You also have visible light and certain wavelengths of visible light, namely HEV, create a lot of oxidative stress in the skin that can damage cell membranes, lead to the visible signs of skin aging, and a family of ingredients that may protect from that visible light is iron oxides and tinted sunscreens. So like this one is a favorite of mine by R&R, their sun serum, or sorry, Undefined Beauty, the R&R sun serum. But you also can get iron oxides in your cosmetics, like foundations. Anything that's tinted will have iron oxides that may offer some protection against visible light that creates oxidative stress in the skin. And it comes from the sun, not your devices. Like you don't need to worry about your phone aging you or whatever fear mongering brands are always doing about that. I, I don't know why they don't just understand that that messaging is super confusing and annoying. Like I say may protect because it all boils down to how, to how the product is formulated, the concentration of the iron oxides, the variety of them, black, yellow, 
red iron oxides in total or ideal. And you're not given that information when you buy a product. They're not required to actually demonstrate that their product protects against that. But beyond iron oxides, the other option for fading hyperpigmentation and protecting against those wavelengths is an opaque dressing, like a Band-Aid, which most people don't want to wear on their face. But if it's on your body, you might consider covering it with a Band-Aid or sun protective clothing. When it comes to sunscreens, if you're new here, you've got chemical sunscreens, you've got mineral sunscreens, and you have hybrid sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens have UV filters in them. They don't leave any kind of white cast on the surface of the skin, but for a lot of people, they burn and sting. Then you've got mineral sunscreens, which have the active ingredient zinc and or titanium dioxide. They tend to be well tolerated in people with sensitive skin, but they leave a cast in deeper skin tones. Then you have the hybrid sunscreens, which kind of have a combination of both chemical ingredients and mineral ingredients. They leave a modest cast, T typically are pretty well tolerated by sensitive skin overall. All of these are excellent options for protecting against UV rays, protecting and allowing for healing of existing sun damage. You wanna look for broad spectrum SPF 30 or higher. The big issue when it comes to sunscreens is most people don't apply enough to actually reach the SPF on the label. For that reason, it is recommended that you go higher. Ooh, speaking of hybrid sunscreens, looks like Black Girl came out with a hybrid sunscreen. Their sunscreens are really, I, I really like them. See, this one's got zinc and then it's got some chemical filters in it to protect against UVB. The Make It Matte gel is really nice. Uh, has a nice kind of pore blurring effect. Colorless, zero cast, all chemical sunscreen. The kids one though, the kids one is so good and it's only $4.99. Sunless tanners, they have the active ingredient dihydroxyacetone, more than safe to use, 100,000 times safer than getting a tan from the sun or God forbid a tanning bed, which is just like a mega dose of UVA rays. Uh, so safe to put on the skin. Now we don't know about the safety of DHA when it comes in contact with like mucous membranes or the lungs. So if you go in a spray tan booth, make sure that you protect your eyes nose and you don't inhale uh, but there's no ev I get questions does do sunless tanners increase the risk of skin aging they don't um, and there's actually some evidence that DHA may protect against UVA rays which are what penetrate the skin really deeply and destroy collagen now these on the other hand I do not recommend because they have a very low amount of SPF these um, bronzing products they're usually SPF 15 and so really this uh, kind of encourages people to stay out too long so I don't think these are a good good thing yeah you'll see the misinformed on TikTok spreading their misinformation about how oh well they'll say oh if you look at the graph as soon as sunscreen started being sold that's when melanoma rates started increasing but what you have to remember is that in the early days of sunscreen sunscreens offered very little to no uva protection and basically they encouraged people to stay out in the sun much too long they weren't they didn't have adequate uva protection on board uva is a major player in skin cancer formation and they stayed out too long, so they got too much UV exposure because they weren't burning as readily. The sunscreen did protect them from a burn, which is you know what it's marketed to do, but it wasn't protecting against those UVA rays. So long story short, fast forward now to 2022, our sunscreens do have better UVA protection, but the bottom line is you can't rely on just sunscreen alone. You wanna be mindful that you're not staying out too long and you're reapplying the sunscreen. That was another thing people didn't do back then. They stayed out too long, they didn't reapply, and the sunscreen didn't have good UVA protection. So those little nuances are just not conveyed in these people's fear-mongering TikToks. And don't even get me started on the people who like want to make these lofty claims that the seed oils in sunscreens are what are causing skin cancer. Like that is just reaching up up the lower digestive tract, pulling out um, you know what, and putting it on the internet. There's so much pseudoscience on TikTok, I can't even, like it's terrifying to me because there's so many young people on there who just 
consuming complete, complete feces. <laughs> here in the beauty supplements we've got sunwinks very healthy skin now as far as supplements that may help in mitigating some of the damage from the sun we don't have any here but uh it's going to be polypodium which is sold by the brand name heliocare polypodium's antioxidants it has been shown to mitigate the damage uh, that occurs upon exposure to UV when used in conjunction with sunscreen. It may help people who deal with sun sensitive disorders like polymorphous light, but I don't see anything here that looks like polypodium. The other, uh, the other supplement is for people who make skin cancers, namely uh, squamous cell carcinoma, actinic keratoses, or pre skin cancer, people who make those. Uh, the supplement nicotinamide can reduce the number of those little pre-skin cancers that those people form. Taken at 500 milligrams twice a day, uh, but as soon as they stop taking it, then their risk of forming those goes right back to where it was at baseline. So there's that. But yeah, that's pretty much it as far as dietary supplements that do anything for like sun damage or sun, you know, helping mitigate some of the damage from UV rays. All right, I came over here in the supplement section to see if there was any nicotinamide or polypodium, but I don't see any, but I do see they have vitamin D, and I want to address the question I commonly get. Well, aren't you worried about low vitamin D from wearing all that sunscreen? Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Studies demonstrate quite nicely that wearing sunscreen under maximal use conditions does not inhibit vitamin D synthesis in the skin. Um, the fraction of the sun that actually does activate vitamin D synthesis is a very, very narrow wavelength of UVB. Everything else from the sun just is destroying everything else in your skin. It's kind of like putting a blueberry in... 10 gallons of coca-cola and drinking the whole thing for the antioxidants in that blueberry kind of taking several steps back so long story short you can still get vitamin d from the sun when you're wearing sunscreen under maximal use conditions which most people don't wear that much sunscreen anyways and uh bottom line also is that going out in the sun is not a safe way to raise your vitamin D. Uh, there's no way, there's no amount of sun exposure that will not simultaneously raise your risk of skin cancer and sun damage. So there's that. If you are low in vitamin D, then talk to your doctor about safe ways to get it, either from your diet or from supplements if necessary. You have to remember that the majority of UV rays that come to the earth are actually UVA, which penetrate the skin really deeply, destroy your collagen, suppress your immune system. The other thing about vitamin D in the skin is that it depends on latitude, surface area exposed, and your skin type. Well guys, hope that was informative, educational. Don't forget to wear your sunscreen, protect your skin from those UV rays by wearing sun protective clothing, a hat when you're outside. Don't stay out too long during midday. That's when the sun's rays are most intense. Now, if you guys enjoy these kind of videos, on the end slate, I'm gonna put my prior Target Shop With Me video where I go through skincare products for hyperpigmentation and melasma. So definitely check that out. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.